Hey guys, Mr. Brelsford here. Um, we're getting ready to do our next section, which is cities and civilizations. And we're going to look at two things right now. We're going to look at <clears throat> um, how we can, let me make this bigger for a second, how we can determine a civilization. And we are going to um, look at our new vocabulary. So last week, we talked about specialization, surplus, these sorts of things at the birth of farming and how these lead into a civilization. So we have a surplus from farming, so we can um, have enough for everyone. So everyone is taken care of. If you remember back from when we studied governments, um, a number one job is of the government is to protect its people which means they have to make sure everyone has food and feels safe. <clears throat> Specialization gives everyone now a chance to work on a job that enhances the whole community. So this is going to make everyone better. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna preview our text. Let me bring myself back down so we can see the text. Here we are. Um, so first thing, clearly, section two, cities and civilizations. Here are our key ideas. So as populations grew, farming villages developed into cities. So we're moving away from just one village and into a big city. <clears throat> In several fertile river valleys, cities grew, gave rise to the world's first civilizations. People wanted to live near rivers because rivers provided water for them and water for their plants and water for their animals. So water was so important to have fresh water so you could take care of and increase your surplus rivers just made that much easier if you did not live by a river you had to find another way to bring water to you early civilizations all had certain common features um and we're going to talk about those features today the factors that make up a civilization our key terms that we'll talk about is economy civilization resource religion and social class. I'm going to embed this in here, but I know a lot of people had problems with the e-text, um, <clears throat> but you can click this if you have it and it will show you the words. Um, first thing we're going to talk about is the first cities. Also, I see uh, a form of specialization here. A statue was found in the remains of the ancient city of Uruk, which if we remember was Gilgamesh's city. Um, looks like from here we talk about economy and centers of wealth. Here's our first uh, key word. The system that a community uses to produce and distribute goods and services. If you remember when we studied economics, goods are the things you can hold in your hand. This little uh, magnet is a good. I can hold it in my hand. A service is something that you cannot hold. Someone gives you a haircut, which I desperately need. Um, that is a service. Um, one of the not vocabulary words, but a harder word, distribute, means to give out. So to give out goods and services, to control that system is an economy. So the first thing that we're talking about here after we've talked about the cities is how these cities become a center of wealth. A city such as Oric, um, has a complex economy. It can bring money and resources to its area and take care of its people. It's wealthy. Uh, here we talk about early civilizations and some of the things that they built. Here is a magnificent temple. Uh, it's a, called a ziggurat. Uh, there are all over the Middle East. This one happens to be in Iraq. I actually have pictures uh, of it. I'll have to show you guys someday. Um, but <clears throat> This is one that is in tremendous condition. Um, here we have our map, and it shows several different um, areas with, uh, uh, these are civilizations, and if you notice, they are all near rivers. They all chose to be near the rivers because it's a good source of fresh water. Here we also see some signs of specialization um, in artwork and in hieroglyphics. Rise of civilization. So now we're going to see how did they become stronger? Um, how did they become better? Uh, the importance of resources. So we're going to 
look at that. We're going to look at how the things you have in your area is going to make you a uh, is going to make it more important. And that brings us to another one of our key terms. A resource is a supply of something that can be used as needed. It's a good um, settings of early civilizations. We're going to see where they were set. Features of civilizations. So these are all the things that make up a civilization. And here I could see right away it says they shared eight basic features. Cities, organized government, established religion, job specialization, social classes, public works, <laughs> arts and architecture, and a system of writing. Eight. Um, so the first thing they do is they outline cities. We're going to talk about the cities. Um, organized government, established religion. We're going to talk about that, which brings us to these two words here. I'll start with established, which is just a fancy way of saying set up officially. So if I'm established, I've been set up by someone um, who officially made me the person or set me up to be in charge officially. Um, religion is a set of shared beliefs about supernatural powers that created um, and ruled the world. It's also usually religion gives us rules to follow. Job specialization, we've talked a lot about already, but we're going to talk more about job specialization. There looks to be uh, some extra things here that we can look at, some primary sources on the side to help us understand. Social classes, and this is another one of our key terms. Social classes are groups of people that occupy different ranks or levels in society. Um, and they give us some examples down here. We keep on going. Public works, arts, arts and architecture. Here it's showing us what public works is. It's like large scale projects uh, generally organized. Probably one of the most famous ones of all time is the Great Wall of China is a great public works. And finally, a system of writing is the way we're going to finish our um, factors of a civilization. So writing, um, every civilization has evolved a system of keeping written records. Um, while this is partly true, the Incas are considered a civilization and they did not use written word. They um, tied rope in a way. They called them um, uh, quipus and the quipus were a non-written form of record keeping that they had. We don't know how to read it. It's knots tied into rope in several ways, but we do know that they use it as record keeping. It's just not a written form. So their, their form of record keeping is real. And they, every civilization has one, but they don't have a system of writing. But a system of writing is considered something very important to uh, civilizations. Incas are uh, a, a, a different group with that. So we're going to, I'm going to bring myself back in once I get us back to the beginning here. I want to talk about some of the most vocabulary words that we were looking at before. <clears throat> and the first one was economy. I'm just going to write it down real quick. Uh, economy. Economy. And when I think about economy, I think about uh, things that we talked about in class, supply and demand, um, goods and services. So I'm going to come out to the side here, supply, demand, and we can tell based on the coronavirus uh, outbreak that the demand for certain things has gone up and the supply could not reach what it needed, right? Toilet paper, Purell, Clorox, these sorts of things. Um, the supply of those items were low. The demand was very high, and now we're in a situation where um, some people are charging lots of money for these items, and other people, uh, other businesses who are not charging a lot are trying to um, change the rules on how we normally buy things. Uh, another thing that I would think about when I think about that is businesses. So businesses are a way to distribute goods and services, and that makes up our economy. So this is what I think about when I think about economy. Uh, our next word that we're going to go to is civilization. And if we remember from before, a civilization is kind of like 
um, a community. Well, let me spell it out for us. C I V I L I Z A T I O N civilization. And when I think of civilizations, I think of society. Um, I think of civilization as being people who are advanced. So not like our hunter gatherer friends. Um, and it, well, that's very bad handwriting. Let me do that again. Advanced. A little bit better. A little bit clearer. Um, <clears throat> uh, a community or a group or village would be a civilization. When people come together and they have things in common, like maybe they are advanced um, in certain things, certain aspects, like we talked about the Incas just a second ago, um, and how they had developed certain things, they would be considered an advanced civilization. Um, so here we go. We have advanced villages, societies, communities, creating a civilization. Those are words I think of when I think about civilization. Um, how about a resource? A resource is another one of our key terms <clears throat> that we should talk about. So like resources um, are things that we need. So when I think about that, I think again to economics. So I'm going to put economics here. Resources are important to the idea of economics. Um, I think of mostly supply and goods. I'm going to come off of economics and say supply and goods. Um, when I think about resources, I think about materials. Um, and I think about materials that I need. So here I have my word web of resources. So when I think about resources, I think about economics, supply, goods, um, materials, and needs. Things that, that make me think about resources. Stuff that I need to get things done. Uh, one of the key resources, of course, that we've been talking about uh, is water and why these civilizations set up in fertile river valleys because they can get water to take care of their plants and animals, as well as themselves. Um, religion is our next key term. So here is religion. When I think about religion, um, I think about things like God um, or gods in ancient religions. We see that mostly. Um, something you believe in. And I'm going to say faith. And those are kind of all connected. Um, I'm also going to say a community. Um, I think people who have a religion that is similar all kind of um, hang out together and work together. So here I have um, religion goes to God's um, belief, faith, and there's a sense of community of people who believe the same thing coming together. Um, another one Social class. Now, social class is an interesting concept because um, as hunter-gatherers, there was very little social class that we had to talk about. You had hunters and you had gatherers. And really, both relied on each other quite a bit um, to take care of each other. We know gatherers got the majority of the food. But if there was a great hunt, um, it made life a lot better for the whole group. So... Both were very valued in there, and both women and men were kind of seen as equals in a hunter-gatherer society. So social class now is something new. Um, as we get a surplus of food um, and we can have permanent homes, we can now collect things, and we can have people who have stuff, people who have more stuff, people who have no stuff, and we have people who are in charge. So when we talk about social class, we're talking about money and stuff. We're also talking about rank. Um, so when we talk about um, like the president or a mayor, there's someone with power and rank, authority over others. Um, also, we talk about um, being in charge. So 
if you have authority over someone, you're in charge, in charge, in charge, and charge, and these are part of social class. Um, you can even look at it as being on another level, right? You're on another level than people without it. So people in higher social classes, they have money, they have stuff. People in lower social classes have less. We're going to talk about um, a complicated social class of slaves, which is different from the slaves that we normally talk about um, in United States history. We talk a lot about how African Americans were treated as slaves. And um, there is some differences historically how slaves are treated. And we'll learn more about that as we go through Egypt and uh, Mesopotamia. But what's important to know is how the social structure was built. And most societies throughout time had uh, slaves as their lowest class. Next, you had farmers. And then finally, at the top, you had rulers and priests now mixed with the farmers you'd also have like like potters who make you know pots and other crafts you had um people who built tools these sorts of things um what i'm going to do is i know a lot of people had trouble with the ebook and um uh, sometimes it's nice just to have it read to us i'm going to close out and make myself go away um, get rid of, whoops, went the wrong way. We don't want to be on that page. Here we are at section two. I'm going to have the book read to you the pages. Cities and civilizations. As farming spread, many small settlements appeared. In time, some villages grew into cities. In this section, you will read about early cities and how they led to the rise of early civilizations. The first cities. The world's first cities began as farming villages in the Middle East. As the villages grew, they began to trade with one another. Trade, like farming, became an important source of wealth. The City of Uruk At the beginning of this chapter, you read a story about the ancient city of Uruk. Although the story is a legend, the city was real. In fact, many historians consider Uruk to be the world's first city. It was founded about 6,000 to 7,000 years ago. Uruk was different from Shatahuyuk and older farming villages. One difference was Uruk's size. Shatahuyuk covered about 32 acres and was home to no more than 6,000 people. In comparison, when Uruk was at its height, more than 40,000 people lived there. Uruk covered an area of nearly 1,000 acres and had houses, gardens, and large public buildings such as temples. Another difference was Uruk's form of government. Villages such as Shatahuyuk had little need for complex government. People acted and made decisions according to ancient village customs. A village... Oops, we'll go on to the next page. Village council settled most disputes. Council settled most disputes. A city such as Uruk was too large to manage that way. Uruk had a strong, well-organized government. The city's first rulers were probably temple priests. Later, powerful military leaders ruled Uruk as kings. These rulers had far more power than a village council did. Centers of Wealth a city such as Uruk also had a more complex economy than did early farming villages. An economy is the system that a community uses to produce and distribute goods and services. The economy of a society or nation is defined by how it answers three basic questions. What goods and services should be produced? How should goods and services be produced? Who should get and use goods and services? In the earliest human communities, the answers to these three economic questions were fairly simple. Each group produced those goods and services that were necessary for its survival. The group produced these goods and services by hunting and gathering. The goods and services were then shared by the members of the community. Shitalhuyuk's economy was based mainly on farming. By contrast, Uruk's more complex economy was based on both farming and trade. Workshops that produced all kinds of goods lined the city streets. 
Traders from Uruk traveled widely. Archaeologists have found pottery and other trade goods from Uruk in many places in the Middle East. The wealth of Uruk and other early cities attracted many newcomers. People began to move from the countryside into the cities. Many early cities built walls to protect themselves from raiders. Uruk, for example, was surrounded by a thick wall that stretched for six miles around the city. This wall was a sign that Uruk was a wealthy city worth protecting. Reading check: Where did the earliest cities appear? So we already talked about this.、Um, where did the earliest cities appear? They appeared along river valleys. Um, this was because that provided them with the water they needed to take care of their farms.、Um, here are the ruins of Uruk.、Um, even after all these years, we're talking seven thousand years. The wall is still there. The wall that protected the city of Uruk. So we talked about that as Gilgamesh made his people create the wall. It was such a massive wall that it still exists today, even after all these years.、Um, we talked about this already. The earliest civilizations rose in four fertile valleys in Asia and northeastern Africa,、um, <clears throat> and we saw versions of the、uh, job specialization and what it was able to create. The rise of civilizations. The rise of civilizations. As early cities grew in size and power, some of them became centers of civilizations. A civilization is a complex society that has cities, a well-organized government, and workers with specialized job skills. The word civilization comes from the Latin word civis, meaning resident of a city. The importance of resources. The rise of early civilizations depended on the creation of a food surplus. Creating that surplus, in turn, depended on the ability of people to manage their resources well. A resource is a supply of something that can be used as needed. The most important resources that people needed were fertile soil, fresh water, and seeds. However, these resources were worth little if people could not provide the labor and tools needed to produce enough food. Managing these resources well required a level of planning and organization that marked a new stage in human society. Settings of early civilizations, like the earliest villages, the earliest civilization also appeared in southwestern Asia in the city-states of Sumer. You will read more about the Sumerian civilization in Chapter Three. In time, other civilizations appeared in different parts of the world. Four of these early civilizations developed in the fertile valleys surrounding major rivers: the Nile in northeastern Africa, the Tigris and Euphrates in southwest Asia, the Indus in South Asia, and the Huang River in China. You can see the locations of these river valley civilizations on the map on the opposite page. River valleys provided a good setting for permanent settlements. Each year, the rivers rose and flooded the nearby land. When the flood waters went down, a fresh layer of fertile soil remained that farmers could use to grow crops. Not all early civilizations began in river valleys, however. Greek civilization, for example, emerged on a rocky peninsula in southeastern Europe and a series of islands in the eastern Mediterranean Sea. The Maya civilization started in the rainforests of present-day Mexico and Central America. The Inca civilization began in the Andes Mountains of South America. Pause it right here for a second. We can see the My World connections. Many American cities, such as Boston, New York, and New Orleans. Grew as ports for sea or river trade.、Um, the Hudson River flows out into the Atlantic Ocean through New York City, and New York City is one of the largest cities on the East Coast. Boston is right on the water,、um, and it allows people who are trading from、uh, by boat to bring in large amounts of goods, and that is an easy way to move things when you can travel by river or ocean in a boat. 
Reading check. Why did many early civilizations arise in river valleys? Features of civilizations. The civilizations rose and rose in different and different parts. Different parts of. Still, all of them had certain things in common. Early civilizations shared eight basic features: cities, organized governments, established religion, job specialization, social classes, public works, arts and architecture, and a system of writing. Cities. The first of these features was cities. Early cities emerged near farming centers. As food surpluses led to rapid population growth, villages grew into cities. They served as centers of religion, government, and culture. A few ancient population centers, such as Damascus, Syria, are still major cities today. Here we see the word established again. That's set up、uh, officially, and then our keyword religion is coming up. Organized governments. The second feature of early civilizations was a well-organized government. One role of government is managing society's resources so that people get those things they need to survive. A strong government can also form and train an army to defend a society from attack or to expand its borders. As populations grew, government became more difficult. Rulers came to rely on large numbers of public officials who handled different duties. Established religion. A third common feature of a civilization was an established religion or a set of shared beliefs about supernatural powers that created and ruled the world. Religion was often linked to government. Rulers of early civilizations usually claimed that their right to rule came from the gods. In China, for example, emperors were called sons of heaven. In most early civilizations, people believed in many gods and goddesses that controlled most events in their lives. People feared their gods, but also hoped that the gods would protect them from harm. To keep their gods and goddesses happy, priests offered sacrifices and led prayers. This prayer is from the civilization of ancient Sumer. May the wrath of the heart of my god be pacified. May the god who is unknown to me be pacified. May the goddess who is unknown to me be pacified. May the known and unknown god be pacified. Pacified is a fancy word meaning satisfied or happy.、Um, so here they're really hoping that they are making the gods happy so that nothing bad happens to them. That's what the prayer is all about.、Um, my sins are seven times seven. Forgive my sins. So forgive me. I hope you're happy. I'm trying my best. It's、so、the whole idea of the prayer. I want to bring your attention to the eight features of civilization. We've already talked about cities, well-organized government, and now established religion. These are the first three features of a civilization, and we're going to talk about the other ones coming up. But this is a great chart for remembering the、uh, eight features of civilization. You're going to see those、um, on our work today and on our quiz on、uh, Friday. From earliest times, religion included beliefs about life after death. People also looked to their religion for rules about how to treat one another and how to live moral lives. Job specialization. Job specialization was a fourth feature that was common to civilizations. Most people in early civilizations were farmers. They produced enough food to support many kinds of specialized workers, such as priests, rulers, soldiers, craft workers, and others. Priests specialized in religious activities. Rulers and soldiers specialized in keeping order in a society and protecting it from outside threats. Skilled craft workers specialized in producing goods. Traders and merchants specialized in buying and selling goods. Job specialization allowed people within a society to develop the many skills and talents needed to create and maintain a civilization.
So here we see examples of job specialization. Carpenters in ancient Egypt working on a boat um, and a baker in medieval Europe uh, baking bread for others. And of course, today, a physical therapist who is helping out this child um, with some kind of injury. So physical therapists, doctors, these are specialized jobs that allow us to do other jobs. Um, and that's part of how we survive in a civilization today. Social classes. A fifth feature of early civilizations was a system of social classes. Social classes are groups of people that occupy different ranks or levels in society. Class structures resembled pyramids with the smallest number of people at the top and the largest number at the bottom. The highest social class in most early societies was made up of priests and rulers. The people at these ranks had the most power and wealth. The social classes in the middle included farmers, merchants, and skilled workers. Members of these classes varied in wealth and status from one society to another. In many societies, slaves made up the lowest class. Slaves were often prisoners captured in war or poor people who sold themselves to pay their debts. So as we can see already, um, the slaves of ancient times were very different. They were usually not people who were um, bought from another country and then uh, brought to a new world. These are people who were either captured in a war or they could not pay their debts and gave themselves up for slavery. And their slavery usually, uh, in, the, in the case of the poor people, was only until they paid off what they owed. Public works. Public works. Public works were a sixth feature of civilizations. Governments organized workers to build large-scale projects such as roads, water systems, city walls, and granaries where food was stored after harvesting. Building these public works was costly, time-consuming, and often dangerous. Often workers were injured or killed. Still, public works benefited the society as a whole. Arts and Architecture Architecture was closely related to public works. Early people built and decorated magnificent temples, tombs, and palaces. Many of these buildings served a public function, but there were also objects of beauty. Early civilizations developed other forms of art as well. In this chapter, you can see a number of examples of statues and paintings that date back thousands of years. Skilled craft workers also produced fine luxury items for the upper classes, such as gold jewelry and perfume boxes. Music and literature, too, enriched the lives of early people and became a mark of advanced civilization. Here we see other public works projects, a modern American public school. All of our schools are products of public works. Um, this was a bath. Um, in the Indus River Valley. And let me move this here. This is the Inca road system. It's still um, a very nice road that you can travel on. Uh, and it's thousands of years old, or hundreds of years old. I'm sorry, not thousands. System of writing. The final common feature of civilizations was a system of writing. Forms of writing varied from picture writing to symbols representing sounds and letters. In some early societies, writing was first developed mainly to record numbers, such as the amount of grain harvested. Eventually, however, people used writing to preserve all kinds of information. They recorded laws, wrote down prayers to the gods, and described the mighty deeds of rulers. Historians have learned much about early civilizations from the written records that they left behind. With the development of writing, we pass from prehistory to recorded history. Reading check. What are the eight basic features of civilization? At this point, you should be going to um, 
the form that I'm attaching to your assignment uh, called uh, Vocabulary and Factors of Civilization. Um, <clears throat> most of it is vocabulary related questions. Uh, you're going to fill in the blank in the way to use the word correctly. So think about the way we talked about what these words mean. Economy. Uh, it's about businesses. It's about getting money. How would you use that word in a sentence? So as you fill in the blanks, make sure you're looking at that. Also, we talked about um, <clears throat> uh, civilizations and how that meant that it was like an advanced community, a group or a society. Um, we talked about resources, the needs, um, and goods, supply and demand. Um, again, economy, religion, uh, beliefs, uh, faith, God or gods, and then social classes, your rank, who's in charge, power, authority, sometimes money and wealth. Um, the reading check question that we just heard is one of the questions. Here we got to find, we have to go back and get the eight. Um, parts of that make up a uh, civilization that all civilizations seem to share. And we're going to also prove how Uruk is a civilization. Um, we can go all the way back to page 79 if you want to, but there is evidence from page 90 to 97 in here. Um, I suggest as you go through this that you take a look around and you will see evidence that proves that um, Uruk is a place that is a civilization. Um, I might start here, um, but you can find it, if you go back to page 79 in the story of Gilgamesh, um, you can find it here on page 90, page 91. Um, look through these. You should find what you're looking for um, in regards to that. On question 10, you're going to use races. So restate, answer, cite evidence, explain your evidence, and summarize. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, please message me on the board. Um, email me, call me, text me. Let me know so I can help you with this. Um, but I feel like you guys should be able to do this. Just make sure that if you're, if you, if you're confused that you reach out. Um, I'm here to help you guys. If you are doing this very late at night, I've had several people after midnight logging on to do my work. I appreciate your determination and perseverance to get the work done, being diligent and responsible. Um, however, go to sleep. Do my work at a time where I can help you, okay? Um, do not try to do this at midnight. Uh, I will be available to you guys until 5 p.m and try to use that. All right. Again, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I'm going to stop the